So who am I, why don't I have a shirt on, and what are you looking at? My name is Stephanie and I'm 32 years, oh shit, no ma'am, I'm 31 years old. Ooh, run that back. What's up guys, my name is Stephanie and I am the Boobless Babe. You might be asking yourself, what happened? Where'd they go? What am I looking at? I get it, I understand. I'm rocking your world right now, but stick with me. My story started when I was younger. My Oella unfortunately had breast cancer twice, thank God she has survived and beat it and we still have her to this day. That led my aunt to get tested and she found out she had the BRCA mutation. BRCA is a gene that we all carry and it is a cancer reducing gene. Now, when you have a mutation in that, you are at a heightened risk for those cancers that they're supposed to reduce. I myself was at a heightened risk of 87%, whereas the average person is only at a 7% chance of getting breast cancer. So then after my aunt got diagnosed, my mom decided to get tested and found out she was a carrier. Now, what that means for me is that I had a 50% chance of having the genetic mutation as well since one of my parents was positive for it. Now, this all happened when I was 18 as far as my mom getting diagnosed with the BRAC mutation. And she and my aunt both underwent a preventative double mastectomy and a hysterectomy. At 18, I was told not to think too much of it. And I think that that comes from your parents and your medical advisors not wanting you to live with anxiety or or this proverbial guillotine, guillotine, guillotine? Guillotine. Over your head at all times, thinking the worst of the worst, because a lot of times we do that. So I did take that and decided, okay, it's nothing. And my ignorant self, this is probably one of the worst things you can say or think in the breast cancer community. And I've learned this with age. Mind you, I was 18, I was stupid. I was very insecure about my body. I did see it as a free boob job. I saw my mom, you know, relatively healthy. I didn't have a grasp or an understanding of everything that was going on. And I, she, the way that it was conveyed was that now she's getting, you know, fake implants and everything was fine. And I don't know if that was a disservice that they downplayed it so much for me um, or if it was a benefit because now, again, how it led into my story. But I did, I did think that it was a free boob job by your insurance company and, you know, nothing to worry about. Boy, was I wrong. So I stored all that information away, didn't think anything of it. Every period I get really bad fibroids, I get cysts in my armpits, I have an ovarian cyst on my left ovary, and I just, you know, chalked it up to be all normal. I went on, I had my son when I was 23, and I decided to finally get tested for the genetic markers and mutations when I was 27. How did I get tested? I actually went through my gynecologist, and I don't recommend doing it this way. Um, if you do, that's perfectly fine. I recommend starting with a genetic counselor first. Having a genetic counselor by your side, having that one person that can really talk you through everything that you're about to go through. And again, I recommend doing this before you actually do your testing. Seek out a genetic counselor, maybe your insurance covers it. If not, it's, it, it's so necessary to find a good genetic counselor because this is a scary moment. You really don't know what you're going to get back and understanding the medical mumbo jumbo, I, at least for me, it was overwhelming. I did not have a great genetic counselor. However, I didn't do a lot of research. I went to my gynecologist and I spoke to them about my concerns, my family's medical history. It was a very rough process and I had to change providers um, to find and finally get my testing done properly. I went through a mobile phlebotomist company and they came to my work they did my blood draw and then within two weeks i found out that i was positive i had the genetic mutation in my BRCA gene and what did that mean for me and for the longest i thought that you know i would be okay and overall i was i will say i was affected for just you know a couple hours in the sense of like i had at this point almost nine years ten years to kind of sit with the fact that I could be positive and what that would mean for me I had my son I wasn't experiencing anything and I was like okay growing up I never liked my breasts I, I if you're not a girl I don't think that you'll understand maybe you will I don't want to discredit anybody's experiences but from a young age you start comparing yourself to other individuals you know your friends what you see on TV magazines things like that and I would compare myself to all these other girls who they were developing faster their and where their boobs sat on their body and I'm not being perky and then having my son and breastfeeding for two years let me tell you what those things went south for the winter real quick and 
I was so ready to get rid of them, whether that looked like getting implants or not. And it wasn't until like a month prior to my surgery that my fiance and I actually had a conversation and she helped me realize, you know, that implants really weren't the way that I wanted to go. The conversation kind of went like this. It's like, hey, I support you in everything that you want to do, anything you want to do for your body. Love what you, you know, love that for you. But you're doing a preventative surgery, a risk reducing surgery. And, you know, we have a lot of friends right now that are going through and experiencing breast implant illness, that are getting explants. And personally, me, I, at that time, hadn't seen a lot of reconstructed breasts uh, post mastectomy that I really cared for their aesthetic look. And with that information, breast implant illness, the aesthetic look of things, and also having to potentially change them out every 10 years or so at such a young age starting that, I just decided against it. Now, that was not an easy decision to make at all because I didn't know what else there was out there. It wasn't until I went on TikTok, thank God for the social media, and saw my first flatty somehow. I don't know if I was searching for it or what, but this woman, inspired me so much and literally changed my life forever. Her name is Statistical Oddity on TikTok. She is an amazing individual who I really owe all this to. Like, I don't even know how to thank somebody like that. But she was my first ever flatty. And like many of you, I didn't know what I was seeing. I had never seen a flatty. It did take a minute to register. When I realized what a flatty was, what an aesthetic flat closure was, I ran with that. I sat for a minute in my head and thought, what would I look like being flat? And funny enough, the picture that came to my mind, okay, you have to think of it this way. Think of Steven Tyler. Yes, that Steven Tyler from Aerosmith with his vest, nothing underneath, and just like that swagger, you know? And then I pictured that for me, but my chest would be completely tattooed. Long dark hair, my brown sunglasses. I was gonna be a fucking badass. And I saw it right then and there. And from that moment on, nothing could change my mind. I went to my surgeon, let him know that I no longer wanted to do any kind of reconstruction, that I wanted to stay flat. And that, my friends, that's when the real journey began. I didn't realize how much pushback I would have from a medical provider on something that I wanted for my body, which is kind of crazy to think about, to be honest, because, you know, why wouldn't you expect a cis white male in his late years respect your bodily has haunt me that's crazy but nevertheless i persevered i kept pushing i kept telling everybody anybody who would listen to me that i wanted an aesthetic black closure he pushed back with potentially doing what's called a goldilocks procedure which leaves extra skin on your body in case you change your mind in the future which is what he told me so that way i could get implants because if i were to do it now mind you now being at the time of my double mastectomy at the time, I could have some really big ones, is what he said to me, while he had my chest in his hands. And I was just like, no, I want an aesthetic flat closure. I want to be as flat as possible. As a prepubescent boy, that flat, like nothing. That's not what ended up happening, unfortunately. And since then, I've had one revision with another one scheduled. So am I completely without risk of getting breast cancer? No. I still have a 0.7% chance because there is breast tissue still in like your neck, your collarbones, your armpits area. I still have to do my self exams. I chose not to have any type of reconstruction. I can get it in the future if I chose to do that. I'd have to stretch out my skin with expanders and then put in the implants. That's not something I see myself doing, but for anybody, for educational purposes, you can if you choose to change your mind in the future. It wasn't until my revision surgery that I decided to post my first topless video online and that's when the boobless babe was born. It took off overnight and I've been trying to inspire people, trying to educate people and raise awareness about breast cancer, BRCA, aesthetic flat closure. Because if you take any time and go on my page, you see all of the ignorant comments of what is that? You're a man, you'll never be a man. You're always gonna be a woman. Why did you ruin yourself? And then sprinkled in with support, which I love you guys so much. Even though I am the boobless babe, no matter what it is that I do, I am still Stephanie and I have a multitude of passions and interests and hobbies and I take you guys on for the journey. I know most of you guys are here for the topless content. 
I am 31 and competing again. And so a lot of my content is gym based, health, fitness. That's always something that I've been interested in. I'm a mom to an eight year old boy. I'm a queer woman who has been in a relationship with her amazing partner for almost six years now. I'm a business owner. I currently own two, almost three businesses now, and I'm an influencer, I'm an advocate. I'm about to be a barista tomorrow. <laughs> Like, what am I doing? That's another journey I want to take you on. I'm a Leo. I'm Peruvian and Filipino. And honestly, I'm just a girl. I live a pretty interesting life. And I'd love for you to be a part of it. So if you're interested in more of my story, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. You'll get notified anytime I post anything. I can't guarantee that I'm going to post on a normal basis. I'm going to try my best. But here we are. Fault and all. Or? <laughs> Faults and all, we're going to do our best, and that's all I can do.